And I know uh, you mentioned in several interviews that you have given that you don't you didn't run for the office to just talk about transgender issues. Well, um, as I mentioned uh, before, so when you are the first in the history of the United States, um, this this is inevitable, and we are going to talk about it. And uh, it's it's all up to you how much you want to get into it. But I have some questions, and I want to share some of the stuff that I learned that I didn't know. And in fact, uh, we kind of went a little bit even to the next level, and we did a survey in our network, and this was on Tuesday. Uh, well, I wasn't really proud of the results, but I'm going to share those with you. And then I just got uh, all the, uh, like we have about 175 answers, I believe. So I just want to have a dialogue with you to see if we can um, uh, understand this issue a little bit better. Um, and then we'll just leave it there. Now, first, uh, just from, it's kind of like, uh, oh, and I, I also asked Sean to reach out to UD because this is happening at UPenn. And this is not just one, uh, one athlete, it's affecting a lot of other people at the same time. So, uh, and I asked him what you do, and he played, um, he was the quarterback for uh, UD. Uh, and then he had a different perspective of this issue. And, and then he just got an answer yesterday, what their position is, if they have any uh, issues uh, arise from this yet or how they are dealing with. And I'm going to ask him uh, in a minute. Um, so while I was going through this, I had to do some reading and some uh, documentaries that I had to watch, uh, some new program, news program that I had to uh, kind of uh, watch again. The NCAA um, had a report on this issue. And then, then I said, you know what, let me just go back and then see if I understand the transgender issue. And, and I didn't. Apparently, I did not know the issue. So apparently, my definition, my understanding was not the correct one. So the sex and the gender were two different things. Uh, and then not just myself, but many people that I talked to, they didn't understand that either. So can we just start from there and not, not going, into, going, going into it too much, but then, then it will go into the college sports. So now this identifying uh, gender and how it's different from the, uh, the sex that we are born with, um, what it means so that we can be better educated for them. Sure. So for the vast majority of the world's population, their gender identity uh, matches the essentially the sex that they were assigned at birth, right? And when you're born, people look at the infant's body and they say, okay, based on this anatomy that I can see, you're a boy, or based on this anatomy that I can see, you're a girl. Um, but we know that there is a percentage of the population that have existed throughout time and memoriam across cultures for whom their gender identity differs from the sex that they were assigned at birth. We know that there is um, a, a very deep and um, consistent understanding of one's gender identity uh, that materializes from the earliest moments a, a child can verbalize and communicate. Um, and that for trans people, uh, they have a gender identity that differs from their sex assigned at birth. Uh, and that the only acceptable medical, and frankly, for that matter, I think moral and cultural reaction to that uh, has been articulated that people should be treated consistent with their gender identity. Um, that you can't, that, that in short, you can't change the brain, but you can adjust how the world sees you. Um, and that's what oftentimes transgender people do as they come out, they, uh, they, they, they take steps to have the outer world see what is true for themselves in their mind and in their heart. So, you know, I think one, I would say whenever there's a political issue that's rooted in a single individual uh, and a hysteria and panic around a single individual, I think we should take a breath and go, is this a solution in search of a problem that we're actually trying to solve? When a hysteria is rooted around a single individual person, um, oftentimes that's overblown. Uh, and frankly, 
for that matter, um, a, 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 a pretty clear signal that a political force is seeking to use it as a political football. Um, That's a really good point because I actually, when I was talking to my team, uh, because I did have a little, uh, in our leadership meeting on Wednesday, I asked our uh, guys, um, our um, directors, and what their position on this issue uh, is. And then one of the things that we were discussing, this is coming from the highlight is on one person, and then we really cannot just make this whole um, uh, and I was actually, you know, I wasn't gonna, I, was, I didn't necessarily, you know, we don't um, rehearse these things and we are just talking just now mainly. Wasn't sure if I wanna say this or not, but um, I don't know if the Leah situation did help. Uh, and then I don't know how she's dealing with this and I'm sure she's getting a lot of pressure, but it didn't help the whole situation in my opinion, I felt like, but, um, now, one, now going into the sports itself, um, reading the NCAA. Can I, can, I actually just, can I just quickly say something on the Leah point? Like, she's just a person living her life, pursuing her dreams and her passions. And like, I think, you know, whether the example is, you know, quote unquote, helpful or hurtful in a political context, this is just a person who's trying to pursue their passions in college. And I, I think that, that one, there is physiological and biological diversity within every gender, right? Mm -hmm. Elena Deladon is much better at basketball than many, if not all other cisgender girls. She's certainly better at basketball than I am as a trans person. <laughs> um, there's diversity everywhere. And one of the things that I like to say is that trans people have been competing and playing consistent with our gender identities for years and losing, right? And yes, there are gonna be trans people who win, there are going to be cis people who win. They're going to be trans people who lose, and they're going to be trans people who win. And I think just because there are examples of some trans people who win doesn't mean that trans people have some massive inherent advantage. Um, and even if we're and if we're talking about advantage, if we're really trying to level the playing field, then why aren't we looking at legislation that seeks to ban tall girls from competing against short girls in basketball or? Or, or girls with certain cardiovascular capacity to compete against girls with worse cardiovascular capacity, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's physiological and biological diversity everywhere. What you can have with a policy like this is you can have two identical girls in, in capacity and skill, one who's transgender and one who's not. And the only reason why the transgender girl can't participate is because she's transgender, not because she has an advantage, just because she's transgender. And when you take a, 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 a broad stereotype about a group that is not actually the reality about that group, that's not based on individualized assessment, but, but rather a singular stereotype, you universalize that and then you create a, a policy that then categorically forbids that group from doing something because mm -hmm. of that stereotype being universalized, that is literally the definition of discrimination. And I think, you know, I agree with that. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I actually, I was wondering if I actually, because I think this is very helpful. I was actually wondering if I might have the ability to play a three minute video for you that I think really captures a story that is worth hearing on this topic. Absolutely. So I can give you access to. Um... So you should be able to share it right now. I can, and let me, and I just think this is a really powerful example is that these bills that try to ban trans people from athletic teams consistent with their gender identities, we're not just talking about college kids who are still like young people, we're talking about really young people. And I think this video helps to get past a singular image that people have of who trans people are and recognize that there's diversity among who trans people are, there's diversity in our skill, that we're talking about kids at the end of the day, mm -hmm. and what you think a transgender person is like and who they actually might be are not necessarily the same thing. Ever since I was a kid, I always had a passion to make the world a better place. I'm Rebecca. I'm 14 years old. I am a nerd. I love school. I read a lot and 
yeah, I just loved a lot. because she's a girl she belongs on the girls team to say oh you belong in every way throughout the day we see you you're a girl this is your life these are your friends oh but not on the athletic field it doesn't make any sense i would worry about my friends and the other kids in my school because i know what it's like to have my gender questions to have to be um to prove i'm a girl um and I don't want them to have to go through that because it's violating and embarrassing. When you don't understand something, it can be scary. And when we react out of fear, then we can do really harmful things. The only people who should be afraid of Rebecca are her little brothers, perhaps, because like any good big sister, she terrorizes them at times. My kid is just a kid. She wants to go to school, have fun with her friends, and play sports just like anybody else. Sports are something that I really like doing. I'm so much more than trans. That doesn't make me less of a girl. It doesn't make me less of a human either. I'm just me.